So far we have learned about the basic data types, now we can go a little bit more deeper and try to understand what are the other data types available in C programming. Now if I have to define or you know categorize this data type into two parts, that's going to be really easy. Let me say first one is going to be built-in data type, so that's the first type we have, built-in. And then there can be another one, you can say derived data type or custom data type. I will just write it down here for you derived data type. So there are two main data types we have. We can categorize into two parts. One category is built, another one is the derived data type. Now inside the build data type we are using so far already integer. So this is a built-in data type. Then we have the float. Let me write it down here for you. Float and then we have the corrected data type which is another built-in data type we have been using so far. And there is one more is double for the floating point as well. So I can write it down. That's going to be here. Great. So these are four basic data type we've been using so far and they're built in data type, which means they're already created for us. Now with the help of this built in data type, you can create your own data type and that's going to be called as a derived data type. Now here I can give you some example. For an example, it can be array. Now error is something you're going to learn later on and it's going to be a really big topic for us later on. It's very important data structure. So I'm going to give you more ideas later on. For now, array is, is a collection of variable, collection of integer variable, collection of float variable. It can be collection of double variables. It can be a collection of character variables. So there can be you know multiple variables inside one thing and that's called arrays. For an example, if I say here character here, let's say character name. I'm giving you one example of arrays here. So let's call it name, the variable name. And here the sign of arrays. That's how you can identify whether it's an array or not. So if you see the square bracket next to anything, then it's an array. So by this variable, what I'm trying to say that I have one variable name called name and it's a character type variable. It's an array. Why? Because I have defined the size as 20. So there are 20 characters I can store inside this variable name. So as I said, collection of variables. So collection of character types here going on. So you can see I'm using character data type, which is built in data type to create my own things here, which is the arrays. So it's a derived data type in this case. Okay, great. And like this, well, we can think about one more data type. Let me just change it here, arrays. Okay. The next thing I want to discuss about the structure. So there is one more data type you can think about here for now. It's called structure. Okay. And how do you deal with the structure data type? Let me show you one example. I can go to the test.csc and I can write something here for the structure. So basically you will start with struct keyword and then you will give a name for the structure. And inside this structure you can use all the you know derived or all the basic data type as well or the built-in data type. For an example, I can say a person can have age, a person can have salary for an example, and then I can say a person can have name. So name will have multiple characters. So in this case, I'm going to use the array again. There will be 50 characters for an example, maximum for a name. So here you can see I am using basic or built-in data type, integer float, and then I'm using derived data type to create my own data type, which is called person. And this is called the derived data type structure here. I think you got the point. Again, you don't have to understand how structure work, how errors work, but all I'm trying to explain to you that there are two main data types we have at this point. One is the built-in, another one is the derived built-in or something like integer float character and double, which is something already built for us, and derived is something which we are going to create with the help of this built-in data type. Now one more thing, uh, like there will be one more data type void, which means nothing. If you don't want to return anything, you can use this void. And when we will learn function, you will see the need of this void keyword. For now, void is just a data type which doesn't return anything. That's what you can understand at this point. Well, we have more derived types. For an example, we have pointers. Now I'm not going to discuss about that, but at least you can learn about the naming here at least. So we have pointer which is another derived data type example. We have unions, something I will show you later on, so which is also part of these derived data types. I think for now that's more than enough. And one more well, I can add one more enum is also part of the derived data type enum. Okay. 
that's all for now at least i wanted to tell you that we don't have only integer float character or double we have some other data type which is called derived data type later on you will see them you will create them and you will use them in your project for sure